Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Pedalboard Preamp. Today, we are going to be talking about the Metal Zone pedal. If you're new to the series, then let me explain it real quick. This is all about how if you have guitar pedals kind of just hanging around, or you're looking for a unique way to, to make guitar tones, or you're looking for a portable guitar uh, setup, these are all different reasons you might want to do this. You can very easily take some guitar pedals and make a very unique tone. And so what we're doing here is we're using the Muar Radar, which is an impulse response loader, and basically simulating an entire guitar chain, right? So the guitar is going into the ABY switcher. A little philosophy behind that is that this allows me to create this tone, but then also send my guitar to another rig so whether that's a tube amp or that's an axe effects or something or a vst you know whatever you want to do this just gives you flexibility in blending two different guitar tones into one sound that's going into the tuner over here and from the tuner we're going into the noise suppressor the noise suppressor has a uh, effects loop built into it so that's where all our gain pedals are it's going into the input and then from the send we're going into the tube screamer mini from there we're going into the metal zone. From the metal zone, we're going back to the return on the noise suppressor, and then that's going to the Muar radar, which is then going to the audio interface, uh, which is set to accept line level. One thing I wanted to mention too about the tube screamer, and reason why I brought this along for this uh, demonstration here, is because just like when you're trying to boost an amp, I, I figured why not try that same philosophy, and I'm saying that a lot now in this video, but let's try that same approach to this setup. And what I love about the Tube Screamer stuff is that it sends a little bit of the clean signal through, so that's going to add some clarity. Uh, now, it can be noted that, you know, we're, we're using this for guitar, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be for guitar. You can make this kind of setup for bass. You can make this kind of setup uh, for mixing, whether you want to have like a, uh, be able to send out, a, out an auxiliary send into this setup and do like, like a, a modular reamp setup. I mean, th there's a lot of different options here. Um, one other thing I want to mention is the guitar that I'm using today. What's up? And uh, it has a maple fretboard. It has... Seymour Duncan, JB59 pickups. I put some other mods into it. Uh, brass block on the Floyd Rose. I put upgraded some parts with uh, stainless steel parts. Uh, really just trying to give some more mass to the bridge. Uh, also, the stainless steel stuff holds up a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, this guitar sounds great. It's also really light, uh, which is nice since I'm standing up while I'm making these videos. And uh, usually, you know, when I'm rehearsing i'm rehearsing for hours at a time uh, when you're on stage you're standing for hours at a time so having a light guitar is actually pretty nice uh i'd have some heavy guitars and you know there's a huge difference yeah that's uh that's the guitar we're using for this signal one other thing i wanted to mention i originally started using the dunlop green picks um you know i saw like most people i saw you know james hetfield using those picks and uh you know, so I immediately, I knew, I knew I needed to start there. So I got those. They're still great picks. I still use them. And then I went to these yellow picks, uh, which are a little bit thinner. These are the uh, 73 millimeter picks, except I kept dropping them in rehearsal. So I'd score these with the razor blade. I wouldn't drop them as much, but I still found myself dropping them. All right. So then what happened was I switched. I found these picks. These are the Max Grip. I, I believe they're the Max Grip Dunlops as well. They're also the same thickness. It's 73 millimeter. There's a little bit more flex to this material though. And it also uh, has a bit of a different sound. I'm able to really get like a nice pick rake kind of sound. You know, which is nice for more like lead stuff. It's still consistent with the, uh, when I'm doing the faster stuff, you know, it's not it's not too thin where it's like unpredictable or something. But uh, I've noticed this this pick really stays anchored. You know, it's not moving around when I'm when I'm uh, striking the string, which the other one was. And after I'd play for a bit, you know, my hands would start to sweat. So that was also making that other pick harder to hold. Uh, I haven't had that problem with this pick, which is pretty awesome. So I wanted to make note of that. I uh, also want to make note of, uh, as I was mentioning, materials. Now, I'm going to have to make a video on this to really like really demonstrate what I'm talking about here but I've noticed that you know different guitar picks sound different so if you if you keep your and you have your entire rig set up 
you don't change anything and you use different guitar picks, they strike the string differently and you will get a different sound. Some picks I've noticed can cause like a chirping sound. So I try not to use those. Uh, there are other picks like the picks that are made out of Oltex. I've noticed actually audibly sound better. So that's what I was saying about how I'm gonna have to make a video on that. I subscribe to uh, the Glenn Fricker motto of provide evidence. That's what I intend on doing here. And that's really another reason why I'm having so much fun with this setup here. As I mentioned in episode one as well, this was really inspired by one of Ola's videos on how the metal core is actually really cool. Uh, he had another video on how you can use guitar pedals in this fashion where they basically replace the amp and you're getting uh, all your tone from the pedal itself. And this metal zone is a perfect candidate as proved before, but we're gonna prove again here and we're gonna do it slightly differently. Just at how cool taking a different approach to something could be. So just because back in the day, everyone was using these pedals, they were going into the front of the amp with them, myself included, and I'm gonna get into that story in a minute but plugging it directly into an impulse response and using it as if it was like the amp head in the chain is pretty sweet. Before we get into that, I'm gonna just give you a little backstory. Been doing like a story time thing with these two. Back in the day, really all that was available to an aspiring kid that wants to play guitar was a PV Rage. And this was a 15 watt combo amplifier and it sounded absolutely terrible, but it was an electric guitar amp. So it didn't really matter, you know, until you tried to play metal. And I remember being a kid and going to, at the time I was taking lessons, and I went to the local music store and I saw a case of boss pedals. So I remember going over there and just staring at these things and just thinking like, what do all these things do? Like, they look so cool, but I have no idea what any one of them do. And I've never even like heard of half of these words. Anyway, so I'm looking through and I see one that says metal on it. And I'm thinking, okay, that might be my ticket to getting some high gain tones finally. That's exactly what I did because I got that pedal. And then for like the next couple of years, that was my high gain tone. It started with that PV Rage. And then I actually ended up getting a Line 6 Flex Tone 3. I plugged that into the front of the amp. You know, looking back, I can tell you that, you know, I didn't understand guitar pedals back then like I do now. And so it definitely wasn't set properly. Uh, and when I sweep through the frequency here, if you're unfamiliar with the metal zone pedal, you'll see exactly what I mean. There's probably way too much range. As you can see, I'm on the custom channel. I will switch back and forth just so you can hear the audible difference. But for the sake of the final tone, the custom channel is where it's at. It's definitely a more modern distortion, more usable. This thing having the crazy amount of free frequency sweep. You can find a usable tone with the standard setting or just a standard metal zone pedal and you could just plug that pedal into your audio interface use like Lancaster impulse response loader and like uh, Glenn Fricker for instance shout out to Glenn he's got like a I don't know if it's still out there but he has like a, a free rev impulse response so right there you got a good one a shout out to Bobby Torres from uh, Frightbox uh, recording studios he's on YouTube as well uh, he's got a lot of great tutorials on metal production. You know, those are two guys that I've been watching for a while now. Learn, learn a lot from them. Really appreciate what they're doing. Uh, he has a lot of free stuff out there, too. He might still have some free IRs bouncing around. Uh, there's other sites you could go. You could find some, some free impulse responses, you know, if you don't have like 100 bucks to buy one of these. Because I got one of these used. They're, you know, find them around $100. The reason why I have that on here in the first place is really just to show you the whole chain going into the interface so you can really visualize everything. I didn't want to have any VSTs on in uh, Reaper active right now. I want you to be able to visualize the whole thing. Um, so what we're doing here is, uh, yeah, that's going in through there. It's going down uh, to this tuner. It's going over to the noise suppressor. And then that's going in uh, through the effects loop, going into the tube screamer and the metal zone pedal going around. Pretty sure I mentioned all that. I've filmed this this same part about like probably 15 times. That that was a little recap for you. Let's get into the actual tones. Um, like I said, I'm using my LTD. It's in drop C right now. So let's just hear the clean tone real quick. And uh, bear with me. I need to pull up Reaper again because my screensaver just came on. Yeah, so I have that whole setup and the pedal board going into my audio interface, and then that is being then sent out and 
back into my phone. Essentially, I'm using this whole thing as a mixer, sending the audio to the phone, and it's getting a direct signal. So there shouldn't be any terrible room noise like there was in the last video. This is an untreated room, so I'm really trying to provide audio that's worth listening to. This is, of course, an audio video, and that's really uh, what it's all about. So yeah, that's what I'm doing there. Pretty cool that I can uh, send it all out right to the phone. Makes things a lot easier because last time I had to sync things up and post. Yeah, it really is just not a good time. So this should be a good time. Although that's what I said before and I filmed it about 20 times, you know, but I'm, I'm still going, you know, you don't want to give up. You just, you just got to keep pushing through, you know, you'll, you'll make it eventually. This is the clean guitar, as I just said before, that's the impulse response that I thought was pretty cool. I will sweep through it a little bit and we'll hear some different impulses and I'll have to gain match a little bit because they are different presets with different volumes as they have different features active and uh, disabled. So just want to make note of that. Let's let's get to the metal. All right, here we go. Okay, and one thing I wanted to note is um, a discovery that I've made and have wanted to report on. And that's uh, something I've actually always really known since I've been doing audio. And uh, it's kind of a universal thing, but um, I would recommend doing EQ cuts versus EQ boosts with this pedal, okay? So if, if you're looking at your metal zone right now, you'll see uh, this high-low feature over here. You wanna, you wanna make cuts, all right? So I took a lot out. Of both of those what i will do is i'll take a picture of these settings once uh, i get it dialed in uh you know where we're real happy with it it'll be a little easier for you guys to see and uh those of you guys that you know want to like pause the video to like dial your metal zone into the exact setting that'll be the point that'll be for you guys and also wh whatever you're doing over here you compensate with with this level so if you are going to boost frequency you're going to want to bring the level down all right so i'll demonstrate that right now actually while we're sweeping you know, we'll sweep through some frequency and uh, just, just so you could hear what, exactly what I'm talking about. So here we go. Yeah, so um, as you can see there, I actually kind of like to take take a lot of the bass out just to give it some more clarity. There's so much bass in this pedal. And then the high end, it can get really shrill, you know, as soon as you go past like 12 o'clock. Uh, so I recommend keeping that relatively low. But, you know, depending on whether your guitar is bright or dark, you can adjust that. Uh, so anywhere really, you know, around here is going to be a pretty good spot for you. Okay, and real quick, I'm going to just switch over to the standard, um, just so you can hear how different those two modes sound. So you can hear it's way more focused, it's way more of like a modern distortion. Uh, definitely a more usable tone uh, that's going to re require less work. Uh, but still, uh, for, the, for the guys that have the standard, what I'm going to do is switch over and I'll try and find something cool with that too. So let's do this real quick. We're going to switch over to standard and then we'll find a cool tone for you guys that just have the older Metal Zone pedal. Here we go. <laughs> Right off the bat, I'm, I'm going to tell you that uh, you definitely want to take out a bunch of the high end. Uh, and the older pedal, definitely, um, you know, there, it's, there's way more, way, way more of that undesirable, like, shrillness that you just don't want. So bring that down. And 
again, there's still a ton of bass in there. So I think I'm going to leave that relatively low as well. I, like, I, I'm really finding that doing the cuts and leaving the, uh, you know, let the, let the speaker handle like 80% of your tone and really just uh, find something that's not going to hurt the speaker. So uh, that's going to come with uh, doing uh, high and low pass cuts, essentially. So keep these, keep these uh, down, right? <laughs> So we're still on the standard setting. That's pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm going to check out the mids now and see, see where we're at there. Yeah, so uh, with the mids, you know, there's there's quite a bit you could do. It's really going to come down to your particular guitar, uh, your pickup choice, really uh, finding your choice of impulse response to really dialing in the mids exactly where you want them. This sounds this is sounding pretty good to me. I wouldn't go too far past like uh, you know like a halfway point if you know you know you don't want to go all the way up or all the way down in either direction with this. A less is more kind of approach to this is probably your best bet and then uh, i turned the gain up a little bit just in case like you were trying to do this with just a metal zone pedal uh, without an overdrive before it if you do have an overdrive i recommend putting an overdrive before it and then bringing this gain back a little bit it'll just allow this pedal uh, to not have to do all of the work uh, you you'll create a unique sound by you know essentially combining the two uh, circuits together uh, but yeah, so right now this is uh, pr sounded pretty cool. I'm gonna sweep the mids a little bit more and see what uh, what else I can come up with. This is still all on the standard side, by the way. So this is for all the uh, guys with their metal zone pedals that they've had, you know, in their closet for like 20 years or like whatever. You pick one up used for like 40 bucks, plug it into an impulse response, and you got a cool metal tone. Like you, you know, even if it's just for like you could put this thing in a gig bag, with your laptop. And if you have like a small audio interface, the ability to connect to the computer, you can just run the impulse right off of the computer and plug right in. You got a sweet metal tone anywhere you go, you know, as long as you can bring just a few few things or start, uh, you know, switching up pedals and seeing what you can come up with. If you do decide to do all that, make sure you use hashtag pedalboard preamp. I want to see some submissions and uh, really uh, the idea here is just get our combined effort into coming up with cool unique tones you know we might come up with something uh totally out of left field let's just like start a genre like let's just do it come on guys but yeah uh this metal zone pedal represents a lot to me as i mentioned before i just think it's so cool how this whole thing comes together like this so uh yeah let's get back into sweeping those mids and then i'll switch over to the custom and we'll check out the tube screamer <laughs> hearing like uh it sounds kind of like it's farting out a little bit let me bring the level down and see if that improves it Yeah, 
Yeah, so there's still this like uh like a like I wanna say like some kind of fuzziness or something, but it's like right on the initial transient it that's uh just making it sound a little muddy. And I think that might be why a lot of people don't like this pedal. But you know, I just kind of proved there are some cool tones in here. So uh, maybe not the best for leads, but you know, if you're trying to cook up like a awesome metal tone for rhythms, this might be it. I also enjoy like proving people wrong, like that think that this pedal is completely worthless because uh, you know, this is the standard setting right now. And that's a totally usable metal tone right there. Like if I had that tone when I was younger, you know, with this exact pedal, I would have been happy. This sounds awesome. Okay, so uh, I think I proved my point there with uh, you know this standard setting. Let me take a picture of that. I'm gonna post that you know in the window or whatever. That'll be that for you guys out there. Maybe they've had this pedal stored in the closet forever, and they're like, you know what? Maybe today's the day I break this thing out and come up with a sweet metal tone, and I write a random death metal song using a metal zone pedal. You know that this might be that day, and good for you. Okay, I support you in your mission. So I took a picture, hopefully in focus, because I'm, I'm kind of like juggling all this shit at once here. Um, yeah, I got like this uh, this whole mic set up in front of me. Uh, my camera camera mount, which is terrible. Uh, so if, if, I, if I breathe on it, the thing uh, gives me some nice camera shake and makes everyone nauseous and quit out of my video. So let's switch over. Okay, I just took the picture for the other tone. I didn't touch any of the EQ yet. I just switched over back to the custom mode. Let's see what this sounds like now. Definitely a little better on the leads. I'm still getting that like little bit of like quackiness or something that's going on. Um, so I'm not sure what that's all about. Maybe someone in the comments wants to let me know. But uh, yeah, I know that once I have the tube screamer, it's gonna just like like tear our heads off. But uh, so let me continue dialing this in the custom mode. I'm gonna go back to a setting that I was familiar with, and then we'll introduce the tube screamer and we'll see what that's doing as well. These are good times. So it's definitely pretty cool tone, but I think the icing on the cake is when you add an overdrive before the metal zone pedal. And uh, as I've mentioned before, the tube screamer throws a little bit of cleans in there, which adds that little bit of clar uh, clarity. 
So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just get to it. Here we go. So now with the tube screamer, I'm doing the same thing as you would do with, uh, you know, an, an overdrive going into an amplifier, uh, and that's gain all the way down, level all the way up. <clears throat> you adjust the tone to taste. Now, in this case, I have the tone all the way up. Um, but, you know, you could, uh, it's really more depending on your, uh, wh whether your guitar is bright or dark sounding. Um, you know, and just going back and forth and actually listening. So let's let's hear the tone, and I'll sweep the tone on this thing. We'll hear we'll hear the difference. I'm gonna leave these two alone now. Here we go. Yep, so uh, I rest my case there. This is a sweet pedal. This combination is very cool. Uh, if you have these two, first off, um, I recommend, you know, buying, you know, guitar equipment used just because you're going to pay like, uh, you know, maybe 70% of the initial price and it's the same exact thing. So just do that. And uh, this is like not a sponsored video or anything, but um, with Guitar Center, they have like a 45 day ret money back return policy. So a lot of the stuff I get used, I go through Guitar Center uh, just because it's easy. Uh, you know, um, one thing I will say, as I've mentioned in a different part of this video, is that they go through UPS and UPS has like smashed a lot of my shit. Uh, but Guitar Center has been really cool about uh like giving me discounts and stuff when that happens so it's just unfortunate and it also comes down to like some of the people at guitar center like don't package things properly this guitar that i'm using now it was inside a, a guitar box not like a, a smaller box but like the outside guitar box and there was a couple pieces of paper in there there was no like bubble wrap or anything like that and you could shake the box itself and hear the guitar bouncing around in, in the in the box and actually i remember sitting here waiting for my guitar to show up i heard a giant like thud outside and i was like oh no that can't be my guitar you know, I go outside and I see my guitar was sitting there and uh, I knew it wasn't going to be good. So I bring it inside. I, I see that there's like the box itself has a bunch of puncture wounds all over it. And I'm like, oh no. Uh, so I open the box up. The guitar itself still had the Floyd Rose on it. There was barely any packaging, um, like uh, shipping materials in there. You know, no case or anything. So it was just completely exposed, bouncing around. I'm actually wondering if like someone just like opened the thing played the thing because like the Floyd Rose was still on it and anyone that ships a guitar like knows to not leave a Floyd Rose like the whammy bar on the Floyd Rose when you're shipping the guitar. So this thing got so badly beat up that when I took it out one of the pickups had actually unmounted from the front of the guitar so it took like such a beating that the pickup popped out of the thing and it was hang it was just basically hanging there and uh, on top of that it has a bunch of different chips all over it. But yeah that really sucked. 
uh, but Guitar Center was super cool, as I had mentioned before. That um, you know they helped they helped me out once I told them what happened. I just really wish they could you know improve the shipping because I couldn't imagine if this was like a super expensive guitar. If I had bought like uh you know two three thousand dollar Les Paul and I heard the things smash out front of my house, I would I would be livid. So um, yeah, really uh, makes you think like. If you're going to buy a guitar from Guitar Center, uh, it's going to be expensive. You better just go to the store and bring it home yourself because you can't count on them. And and I could be wrong. Maybe Guitar Center will reach out to me and give me some more info on how they would ship a more expensive guitar. But if they're shipping it the same exact way and they're expecting UPS to make sure that this instrument arrives properly and, and not kicked from the Guitar Center all the way to your house because that's what it looked like to mine. Let's just hope that that stuff improves. This turned out to be like a story about Guitar Center, and it's really all about this pedal. But uh, yeah, so I demonstrated this stuff. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sweep through some impulses. We'll hear some different impulses, and then I'm going to put a song together, and uh, we'll demo this setup that we got here. I'm going to take a picture of this so you guys have that. Uh, this is in the custom channel. I'm going to take a picture. You guys will have that. We'll demo this real quick. Then I'll demo a song with Easy Drummer. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's sample this real quick, and then we'll get on to that. Thanks for watching. All right. So uh, I'm running this through Reaper. I'm using, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm using this as like a mixer and everything. So I just got to make sure the screensaver doesn't come on so that I can actually see the levels. Because uh, I, I do want to gain match. this. The volumes will fluctuate through these presets um, because different things are active on different presets. So, and I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to tone match them or anything. I'm just showing you how uh, running this exact setting and changing the speaker, how different the sound becomes. So that's what we're here for. Here we go. cabinet this thing has base cabinets by the way i could level match we could go into that i'm not going to go into the base cabs right now though um you know i encourage you to really experiment try to come up with a cool tone base cabinets have a 15 inch speaker so uh you know if you want more low end that's one way to do it uh but yeah let's cycle back uh, i'm gonna go back to zero or back to one i should say yeah, some of these uh you know some of these are some of the smaller cabs that they that they uh captured this one in particular, this is the one that I used for the last episode using the metal core and the six band EQ. Uh, as you can hear, not a lot of low end. It is an eight inch speaker, so that makes sense. But it does have a lot of mids, which sounds pretty cool. So yeah, I just wanted to make note of that. That was the one that we used last time. Thank you. 
so um, that one's pretty cool. But again, we're getting into the 12-inch speakers, so that makes sense. Not every single one of these are great, but there are definitely like some good ones. Again, further proving that, um, you know, you don't really need crazy expensive setup to get a cool metal tone. I mean, sure, like this is, uh, you know, I don't have any uh, delay or reverb or anything. This is really more for just like a metal rhythm tone. It's also really cool for if you just want something that's super small and portable. You don't need a lot right here. I mean, th this thing has a uh, headphone out, so technically I could just have these two like in a gig bag and if i'm out and i, I just want to be able to shred real quick boom that's all you need pretty sweet and you know with this tone now of course it would actually be this tone but that's why they made this thing a mini because you could fit that too. These two combine with their combined forces. It's technically like two regular pedals. And you can fit two regular pedals in a gig bag. So you can fit one regular pedal and two mini pedals. Look at that. You are going to need a power supply though. So this is actually starting to get a little bit bigger than I was at first anticipating. Though they make small power supplies. You don't want to um, daisy chain power supplies. You want to make sure that each one of them are getting like their own power. So do that as well. Because... Uh, if you don't, you will end up with noise problems and that's not fun. Of course, I'm using this noise suppressor as well because that is also getting some of this nastiness out. I'll turn this off real quick. We'll see uh, if, I actually, if it's actually improving the signal. So let's check that out. Okay, and yeah, there you go. That's That little bit of buzz there is sitting around like negative 30 dB. So that's just cutting all that crap out. You know, I've heard that this isn't the fastest gate in the world, and it's an old design and everything, and there are definitely better modern gates out there, one of them being uh, the Glenn Fricker uh, Spectre Digital Cock Blocker, and you, I have the VST version of that. That thing's awesome. Uh, using that as a sidechain gate is like a lifesaver, and you can go and check out his videos on that. Uh, if you want to see that thing in action because it really truly is something that will just make your life so much easier and if you're going to spend all this time learning and setting things up and writing music and everything else you want things that make the the final result like easier to accomplish and having a sidechain noise gate 
on your guitars is one of the ways to do that. So uh, check out his videos on how all that works. Definitely go over to his site and get that VST because you need that. If you're if you're getting into gu recording guitar, you need that. Of course, right now I'm just using this noise suppressor. So if you have one of these hanging out or just like another noise noise gate or something that'll get the job done for what we're doing here again not sponsored but i'm gonna just shout out that plugin just because it truly is a lifesaver when you're having to mix music and you can just cut all the all the crap out of there that you normally would have to physically go in and cut make cuts it just does all that hard work for you so yes look into that getting back to this you saw how great that was if you don't know about pedal tuners it's very very simple obviously it's a guitar tuner this is a really good one it also will pick up bass and my h string a lot of other tuners even like the tuner on my axe effects doesn't necessarily pick up my h string and this thing also again i mentioned this stuff in episode one can go down to 432 hertz a lot of other tuners i checked they stopped at like 435 and uh, I know like Pantera, if I remember correctly, they tuned down to A425. That's why if you ever try to play along to a Pantera record, you can never stay, you can never be in tune because they're actually completely uh, changing the game there. Back in that time, a lot of bands were, were doing that just to try and stand out, get a different sound. So they were going from A440 to, you know, A425 or in my case, I needed to go to A432. It also is really helpful just being able to mute your signal. And then you just tune up real quick. So you can see I was a little out of tune there. Uh, these are older strings too, so. And yeah, that's, uh, that's this segment of pedal board preamp episode two. Now I'm going to get over to, as I was mentioning before, the actual song. So let's check that out. Here we go. Okay, I'm back. I moved some stuff around. Now you see me. Now you see the guitar I've been using for this entire time. It's very cool, very blue. This being a direct from the interface to the phone video, I'm not going to add any extra tracks, meaning I'm not going to double track the guitars. I'm not going to add a bass track. I'm not going to add uh, like another guitar, whether it's a lead or a clean or something. All you're going to hear is just me plugging into this and some drums as if you were just plugging in and riffing out. Okay. So that is what this audio is going to be. So it's not going to be like a complete mix per se, just really like what the tone would sound like if you were going to track with it. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, and I think it's safe to say that that little demo proves that the Metal Zone is badass. Okay, so I am not going to use this guitar in this video. I've used this guitar in other videos, but uh, this is always, you know, one of my favorite parts of owning this guitar right here. Boom. Yeah. This guitar is cool. That is my two LTD M400s, and uh, that's my Jackson bass behind it. It's actually a relatively cheap Jackson bass, uh, but that doesn't really matter because it plays awesome. It sounds awesome, and uh, stick around for episode three, and you'll get to see that in action. These guitars are sweet. They're a little different. Uh, this guitar has a JB and a 59. And um, the guitar behind it has a custom five. I can't remember the other pickup off the top of my head. Uh, but um, 
there is a, a pretty noticeable difference between these two. Uh, also, as you can see, the fretboards are different. I prefer the maple fretboard. Uh, in my opinion, it's easier to play. Uh, it's faster and it sounds better. I'll have to do like a comparison video between the two where we cycle the same guitar tone and see what happens. This is my desk right now. This is where we're shooting episode two. Uh, say what up to the Dimebag guitar. There's my Randy Rhodes. That's actually the first metal guitar I ever owned. I'm in the process of modding that out. So uh, expect some videos on that as well. I just love, I love the look of these, of, uh, you know, these three guitars together like this. Looks so cool. And uh, yeah, so this is just kind of a quick little reference so you can see, uh, you know, the, the production I got going on here. Uh, my advice is dust off your metal zone pedal, plug it into an impulse response, and start ripping. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate your support. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let, again, let me know ideas for future videos, things you want me to talk about, discuss. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.